All right, members, we are taking up bills without reference to file. We are going to begin with AB 1673 by Mr. Gibson. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1673 by Assemblymember Gibson and others, and actually in firearms. Mr. Gibson, you may open. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker and members. I rise to present Assembly Bill 1673, which seeks to amend the definition of a firearm to ensure that law enforcement is better able to track the sale of critical gun parts and keep them out of the hands of people who pose a threat to our society. On June the 7th, 2013, a 23-year-old man killed six people in Santa Monica using an untraceable gun he built at home. This also happened to be three blocks from one of our colleagues' residents. It is likely that this man had a mental illness but was, but was able to buy a receiver blank and put it together anyway. We can never bring back Carlos, Marcella, Margarita, Christopher, Simeon, who lost their lives on that day, that changed their families' lives forever. The speaker and I recently brought forth H.R. 52, recognizing National Gun Violence Awareness Day. Gun violence is a cancer that plague our communities and take the lives of members in my district away. Members, I would love to be able to bring a bill before this body to talk about creating more green space or even bring a bill to talk about cleaning up contaminated water. But instead, I stand here today to ask you to pass a bill to stop the killing in my community in California. The definition of a firearm was created in the Gun Act, in the Gun Control Act of 1968, where it was defined as a lower receiver or a frame of a gun. A lower receiver or a frame is found in every firearm from a pistol to a semi-automatic rifle and requires the owner to obtain a background check and the receiver to have a serial number imprinted on that gun. All the guns that are operational can, be, can fire bullets as a receiver. AB 1673 will expand the definition of a firearm, including an 80% lower receiver, which are non-functional receivers that can be easily converted into an untraceable functional weapon of mass destruction. This means we will be able to regulate the creation of ghost guns so that people who make guns at home or buy the parts online, law enforcement can trace those guns in the event of a crime. This change, this change will help the Department of Justice prosecute gun smugglers who sell unregistered guns and improve the public safety by reducing the flow of untraceable guns in our state. Members, little Autumn Marie Johnson, a one years old, a one-year-old baby in Compton was murdered in her crib. Members, Justin Yui was murdered on the sidewalk in my district in front of his home. He would be graduating next week and on his way to college. Michelle and Jordan Love, after enjoying a movie as mother and son, drove up in their driveway and was shot and killed in their driveway. That just happened this year. Members, when I was a police officer in the city of Maywood, patrolling the city of Maywood, 
a hysterical young lady got my attention. And I put the call out, and I got out of the car, just to find that her boyfriend, who they were sitting in his car, listening to music, little Jesus was 16 years old, and someone shot him in his head. I had to pull him out of his car with blood on my arms and gray matter on my jacket. I went with that family to that hospital. Eight hours later, the doctors had said there was no more brain activity. The next morning, they pronounced him dead. 30 seconds, Mr. Gibson. We must do everything that we can to get guns off of our streets and out of the hands of people who should not be possessing these guns. I would just simply ask your support by supporting Assembly Bill 1673 and request an I vote. Thank you, Mr. Gibson. Ms. Melendez, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and colleagues. Um, I regrettably must stand up and speak in opposition to this bill, though my colleague, um, the author, is, has given quite a compelling argument for it. I just want to talk to you briefly about what this bill actually does, which addresses the components um, of firearms. This would require firearms retailers by law to process the transfer of forgings, castings, blanks, machined bodies, not an actual gun put together, but pieces of it, um, and as, as c process them as firearms components. And you heard the author talk about um, the two stories, uh, the two murders that took place in his district, which are heartbreaking. Um, and, and involved some firearm or weapon or piece of a weapon like is described in this bill. And I, I would not want to be the person who had to go and tell those parents what happened to their child. I wouldn't. But I, I think this, this oversteps um, and it doesn't accomplish what the author and the rest of us so desperately want to do, which is not have to go to these parents and tell them that this happened to their child. Um, these r r firearm components, I just want to make sure everyone is clear. Uh, so triggers, sears, hammers, bolts, bolt carriers, firing pins, um, trainage buffers. I mean, there's a whole list of things that fall under this bill that by themselves aren't going to kill anyone. Um, I, I think the larger issue, frankly, uh, in across our nation is why people are are killing other people, why they're gunning down our children, um, and, and the trafficking of illegal firearms across this country, not pieces of a weapon that could or could not be formed into a firearm later. I think we're missing the bigger point here. So while I have great respect for the author and what he's trying to do, and I think everyone in here does, I don't think anyone would disagree with what we're trying to accomplish here. I would have to ask you to just be cautious about what you're voting on and, and not vote on something that in the end you will not be able to come back to your constituents and say, I did something to help prevent gun death. You want to be able to hang your hat on something that was effective and not have people come to you and say, you know, what have you done? And you say, well, I voted for this bill. And they say, well, that did nothing. So with respect to the author, I would ask for a no vote. Mr. Mathis, you're recognized. Mr. Speaker and members, I rise in opposition. This bill raises serious concerns under due process clause of both the California and United States constitutions. The term readily converted is inherently vague and ambiguous. The courts have made clear that laws perpetuating to regulate fundamental rights include those enshrined in the Second Amendment must provide greater levels of clarity than laws which do not impinge upon constitutional liberties. In addition, the language in this bill is so far off from federal and long-standing California firearms law that the notion of what is and what isn't a firearm will be completely overlooked, depending on how this vague terminology is interpreted, because machines can easily convert pieces of metal into firearms this would, bill would essentially treat pieces of metal as firearms. The result 
would be to subject hunks of metal to the California's exhaustive regulations and restrictions currently applicable to firearms. This bill also requires that all firearm components be transferred at federal firearms licensees. Firearms components can include triggers, sears, hammers, bolts, bolt carriers, firing pins, sights, trigger unions, buffers, springs, muzzle brakes, and barrels. Each of these firearm components, or anything that is subjectively identified as a component of a functional firearm, including any piece of metal or polymer, would then also have to each be registered separately as unique and discrete firearms. In California, creating a massive backlog at DOJ, which is already having issues and troubles fixing the APPS program. Members, this will, bill will do nothing to target the criminals. It, it does nothing for us. What this does is this goes after our law-abiding citizens, and my heart goes out to the families that we've lost. We have a huge gun violence problem, but we need to look at measures like affecting mental health policies. But unfortunately, we've cut the budget on mental health yet again this year. We need to give tools to our law enforcement to go after the criminals. We've had this argument across the history of mankind. Plato goes so far as to say righteous people don't need laws to tell them to be just. But criminals will always find a way around the law. We have to look at what we need to do to go after the criminals and look at what our motto says, and that is to make just laws, not to overstep the bounds of government and go after our constitutional rights. Again, I ask for a no vote. Thank you, Mr. Mathis. Ms. Waldron, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Uh, I regrettably rise in opposition to this bill. Um, AB 1673, which expands the definition of a firearm to include an unfinished frame or receiver, can be readily converted to the functional condition of a finished frame or receiver. But as a general rule, these unfinished products are not made by firearms manufacturers and therefore are not affixed with serial numbers. If they are defined as firearms by the California State Legislature and the Department of Justice, they will be illegal to possess under state law but not under federal law. What's even more concerning, however, is if someone were in possession of a perfectly legal unfinished receiver pre-passage of this bill, they would be in immediate violation of the law post-passage, even if the full firearm had not been constructed. By expanding the definition of a firearm to include unfinished frames and receivers, the door will be open to considerable confusion. Currently, there are literally hundreds of thousands of firearms that have been finished and built into complete guns and are legally possessed by California citizens who are law-abiding and never been involved in a crime. Furthermore, Governor Jerry Brown has already weighed in on a similar issue, having vetoed SB 808 by Senator DeLeon, which would have required individuals to build their, who build their own guns to attain a serial number and register them with the DOJ. He affirmed that adding a serial number to a homing gun would not enhance public safety. Unfortunately, it's the bad guys out there who are committing the killings, not a hunk of metal or an unserial numbered gun. Criminals will steal the guns or buy them on the black market regardless of the outcome of this bill. I urge a no vote. Thank you, Ms. Walder. Mr. Allen, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just brief comments. Uh, despite the fact that some on this floor uh, believe that felons in custody should be able to vote, we would all agree that criminals shouldn't be allowed to own guns. I'm very understanding of the testimony that was given by the author, and my heart goes out to any victim of gun violence, any victim of any violence for that matter. However, this bill is not, not the right approach at all to curbing that violence. What this bill would do, it would have this, the California Department of Justice issuing approval to ship or deny shipping on chunks of metal and plastic. Furthermore, these chunks of metal and plastic would have to be transferred at a federal fire, as a federal firearms licensee. Simply put, it would create a massive bureaucratic regulation of items that aren't firearms at all. Due to the vague language of the bill, passage this legislation would put law-abiding citizens at risk of criminal arrest and prosecution while doing nothing to solve the problem and nothing to take care of our violent criminals. 
which need to be taken care of. I urge no vote. Mr. Thurman, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Colleagues, I rise in support of AB 1673. There is nothing about the intent of this bill that seeks to harm law-abiding citizens. We could spend hours here debating various components, but what we should really do is focus on what the intent of the bill is, and it is simply to save lives and to simply recognize that there are individuals who take these components and create weapons for the use of street violence and gun violence that takes lives away from many communities. Let's just do the right thing. Let's not hedge about words. Let's save lives. I urge your vote on AB 1673. Thank you, Mr. Thurman. All debate having ceased. Mr. Gibson, you may close. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate my colleagues for their comments. I would just simply close by saying that um, the individuals whose lives have been lost, uh, they wish that they did not encounter individuals that took their lives away from them. And also the family members who are still mourning the loss of a loved one because of someone having access to a gun that should not have access to a gun. I would simply also say that the criminals going around the law is the manufacturers who are going around the laws and also looking at the loopholes within the law in order to create guns, such as the, the bill before us. I respectfully ask this body when I vote on Assembly Bill 1673. It's the right thing to do. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Gibson. With that, clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. 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 Clerk will close the roll, tally the vote. Eyes 42, nose 30. The measure passes. Members, uh, ever so briefly, back to guest introductions. We would like to, on behalf of Assembly Member Cooper, we would like to welcome Genevieve Didion's eighth grade class. They are accompanied by a former Assembly Member, former member of this House, Bill Leonard. Let's welcome them to the Assembly today. <laughs> <laughs>